Hello, this is Craig McFeeders, author of Luck Grib. This is a video for sailors where I'll be talking about the passage planning tools on the Mac product. I think rather than going into a lot of theory initially, what I'll do is I'll just dive in to a demonstration of, uh, of some of the capability of these tools. And I'll follow up this uh, short demonstration with uh, some more detail later on. So just diving in, in Luckrib on the Mac, you can create vessels, uh, sailing vessels or, or uh, motor vessels, up to you. Uh, you can create a new vessel and give it a name. And there's a bunch of properties uh, for each vessel, which we'll come to later. So just as in, in the real world, the vessels are, are located somewhere in space uh, at particular times. So I'll change the, uh, the time is determined by the, <laughs> the forecast time. And if you use the, uh, the points and routes tool, uh, you can click down and add a report to that vessel, to the selected vessel, uh, to place that, the vessel there. So let's do that. Now we know that the vessel is there that, at that forecast time. If we advance, we can place the vessel somewhere else a little bit later. And if we advance again, we can place the vessel somewhere else a little bit later. And now if we go back, we can see that the vessel does move between these different reports at uh, different times. Now, it, we're also seeing there's information being shown on the right, uh, this vessel information. And uh, I won't go th through this in much detail at the moment. We'll come back to that. And as you use the product, you'll have more time to spend studying this. Uh, I will mention that the uh, the information being shown here is hierarchical and can be open and closed. So if there's information being shown which you're not interested in, uh, simply close that. And you don't you're not but you not <laughs> and you won't see it anymore. So you can use position position reports to record where the vessel's been, and uh, if you save them, if you don't delete them, you end up with a track uh, of where you've been over time. Uh, of course, what you want to do is build a forecast where you want to be in the future. And to do that, you create routes. So say we want to plan where this vessel will be in the future. So the next point we want to go to is over here. And we'll create a route. And the route point will initially be at that point. And then we'll head over here. And then we'll head down a little bit. And in between these two, we may decide to uh, come over here, and so on. Uh, routes are very easily edited. Uh, now what I want to do is associate this new route with the vessel. So I'm going back to the vessel list, uh, SV first, follow the route, this new route. And I'll, actually, I'll rename this as well. Route first. Uh, and now what happens is if I change the forecast time back up and then beyond where I know it was, so this is a report of the actual position of this vessel. And from that position on, it's moving towards the route and will follow the route. Uh, that's basically, in a nutshell, that's <laughs> what, the, uh, what the app offers. There's a lot of information being shown. So as the vessel is moving around, we can study the uh, parent winds and the relative winds, uh, the wind at the vessel. Uh, we can look at distances and we can make estimates of how where we can be. We can uh, move the cursor around to get an idea of what uh, different decisions would, how different decisions would affect the vessel travel in the future. And we'll come to some of those uh, a little bit later. Uh, no another tool associated with this is the mediogram. Uh, you're able to look at a mediogram for a vessel, uh, for example, here. And as you edit the uh, route, uh, the mediogram will update. Uh, the last row in this mediogram is showing both the apparent and relative winds. Uh, yeah, that's kind of what it is. That's kind of what we can do. So given that, I think what I'll do is I'll show you the route of, uh, of my vessel over the last few years, and then uh, we'll continue on. So let's turn off 
This one will turn on Loch Ness, uh, turn off this route, and we'll unselect this file. And we'll okay, so I've been sailing around for uh, well, a little while now. Uh, I first left Seattle in 2011 and traveled down the coast to Mexico. And from Mexico, I went to Hawaii, Hawaii back to Seattle, Seattle down to Mexico again, Mexico the Marquesas, and so on. So what I want to do is select this route and, uh, and have a quick look at some of those passages. So here's the uh, Mexico to Hawaii route. And if I use the cursor to move it around close to this passage, I can read off the information on the right hand side. There's a cursor information box and below that below that is closest and in that area there's a passage being shown. So that shows me that the passage between Mexico and Hawaii was 2,500 miles and I sailed that in 19 days, 6 hours. Uh, a few years later I came down to Mexico again and I sailed from Mexico to the Marquesas. And that passage was 2,700 miles, which took me 20 days, just over 20 days. Uh, what we can do as well is we see there's some changes of direction in, in here. If you double click on a passage, uh, sorry, on a position of position report, you can uh, show the weather. You can find the group file uh, for that time and uh, see what the weather was like. So here we here I am traveling through the weather at that point. Uh, so that change in direction uh, was basically my decision to uh, cross the ITCZ, uh, and you can do that for all of these. So here's the uh, passage. Let's see, I sail from the Marquesas, the Marquesas over to uh, here's the Marquesa arrival. Uh, then I sail from the Marquesas to the two motos. Uh, that one was only 500 miles over four days, uh, two motos to society, society Islands and Societies. I left Bora Bora and sailed over to uh, Beverage Reef. Uh, that one was uh, 900 miles over nine days. And so on, Beverage Reef ta to Tonga, oh, sorry, to Nui, Nui, Tonga, and, uh, and so on. I eventually ended up leaving New Zealand and sailing to Hawaii. And that one was uh, just over well, 5,600 miles, uh, which took me uh, 49 days, almost 50 days. Uh, and all these, for all these, I can uh, I can come in, and if I get close to a, a particular uh, leg of the route, I can read off uh, the speeds and uh, all kinds of stuff. Click on these uh, reports to find out the weather at that point. And uh, now I can see, <laughs> at that point in my previous track, the wind was uh, the wind was around ten knots. And uh, from this point, just thirty four days to the end of the passage, and so on. You get the idea, I hope. Okay, so from this, let's continue. Oh, I'll show one more thing. So I, I do like the ability to uh, record your entire track. And uh, it's nice to be able to look back and see where you've been and see the weather. I kind of enjoy that. Uh, but when you're working <laughs> on the, uh, the current track, as you move, move forward, uh, you'll find that seeing the entire track the entire time uh, can be quite distracting, especially if you're repeating uh, a journey you've done before. So if I was to travel down the coast of a uh, California and Mexico again, uh, seeing the previous tracks may be confusing. So you're able to go back to the vessel list and uh, have it restrict how many days uh, you see. Oh, sorry, wrong one. Uh, so I'll show just the last 90 days of travel for Loch Ness. And uh, it was 50 days to Hawaii, and then Hawaii was around 20 more days, so 90 days prior to the end of my travel uh, puts me in New Zealand and if I go back a little further uh, over the previous year uh, puts me in Fiji and uh, depending upon where you're traveling and what the track looks like and how distracting uh, it is for your current area 
So if you're sailing around uh, one area a lot, you may want to restrict this to only a few days. So yeah, you can do that too. That's fun. So I think what I'll do is I'll uh, I'll pick a passage and we'll go through that in more detail. And uh, rather than looking at the history of that, we'll try and plan it from our, the departure, pick a departure date, and then plan the travel, or like we'll, we'll travel through the weather for a little while. So let me uh, reset the app a little bit, and I'll come back to you in a moment. Okay, here we are. So we're going to look at the passage between Fiji and New Zealand in a little more detail. So the first point to make is that before you uh, start a passage, you want to get a pretty good idea of what the weather is doing in the area. Uh, now, after uh, uh, some study and some reading, I learned that the weather uh, in this area is migratory. So you end up with basic, basically a lows being spun off of uh, Australia, which head east at some interval. And there's something like seven to 10 days between the lows. So yeah, you want to, before you start a passage, uh, well before, you want to start looking at the weather and getting a sense of the patterns. So in the, uh, you want to leave the South Pacific uh, to avoid the hurricane season. And in, I, I chose to uh, travel south to New Zealand to do that. And the hurricane season uh, typically starts, well, sometime around uh, the first of the November, kind of, it's the same kind of pattern as for Mexico. You want to uh, try and be out of the tropics. Uh, between uh, early to mid, uh, the longer you wait, the more chance of there being a, a stronger storm where you are. So I was targeting to leave sometime around November 1st, uh, but I had enough leeway that if I was to wait for uh, oh, even 30 days beyond that, I felt the risk was pretty low. Uh, but yeah, before you start planning, or before you start a passage, you want to start downloading weather at regular frequency and, and having a look at it, which is what I was doing. Uh, there's lots of weather. I'm downloading weather here uh, pretty much every day. Uh, some of the files are small, which are, uh, that's me studying the weather where I am. And then the larger files are me looking at the bigger patterns. The other thing to do is to uh, pick a general route. Uh, so after a bunch of reading and speaking to people, uh, I learned a good strategy for doing this was to uh, travel south from Fiji, uh, and not in a straight line to New Zealand. I wanted to end up at Apua, you know, in the Bay of Islands here. Uh, the one rule of thumb I read was uh, to head for a point around 30 degrees south uh, pretty much north of New Zealand. And uh, from that point, you have pretty good options for getting from there to, uh, to Apua. So yeah, the first thing I want to do is to generate a route. So I'm back in the points and routes tool. I'll uh, start inside with Sabu. So the first point will be somewhere, yeah, I could even do this. I'll, st I'll uh, create a route. And I'll put the first point kind of in these islands somewhere. Now this route, I'm not going to, I'm not going to worry about making this route detailed, uh, so detailed that it has tax and jibes. Uh, I'm not going to worry about avoiding land too much. Uh, as I'm sailing between Savu Savu and uh, the exit to the Fijian Islands, uh, I'll be up, up, up on deck uh, doing whatever I need to do to avoid all that stuff. I'll be looking at my navigation instruments. Uh, using my eyeball to look around, and I'll, you know, I'll be sailing to a, the direction which makes sense at the time. Uh, I'm not going to worry about going down below to look at Luck Grib, uh, worrying about navigation because nav this, uh, Luck Grib is not navigation. Is not navigation software. You want to navigate uh, using an e using what every you use for navigation. Uh, Luck Grib gives you a good idea of weather, not local conditions doesn't doesn't give you any kind of sense of uh, uh, depths and how far away from islands uh, there may be a uh, coral and so on. So the route is very simple. I'll leave Savu Savu, uh, head generally along this point, and from that exit of the Fijian Islands, 
I'll uh, head pretty much to the target I had, which is 30 degrees south, uh, somewhere north of New Zealand. And then from here I'll head uh, to Apua. So this is a very simple route, and in reality what I'll end up doing is sailing uh, somewhere along this route. I'll be tacking and jibing all along the way. Uh, same down here. And it's long enough that uh, I can't download a weather forecast before I leave and have it be valid for the whole uh, the whole voyage. So I'll be downloading weather every day and as the weather progresses, as it evolves, I'll be changing my mind about what the route will be. But for now, it's good enough. Uh, so we'll call that a Tuapua. And I'll change the vessel so Loch Ness will now follow the Tuapua route. Okay, so at the moment I have uh, Loch Ness using an average speed, uh, I believe it's five knots. Yeah, five knots, that's pretty, uh, that's pretty reasonable. Okay, so the route is around 1100 miles and uh, at an average speed of five knots, I expect to uh, be something like 10 days on this passage. So let's have a look at what's going on. So I'm downloading weather every day and uh, just getting a sense of the pattern. And then as we approach my November uh, first kind of initial target for leaving, uh, I'm still downloading weather every day. And uh, what I want to do is start to uh, plan for a departure. So around this time, so this is October 29th, uh, what I can do is uh, just start doing some tests. But what, what, you know, asking myself, what would happen if I leave today? So let's say I leave uh, th the next day, Friday at around, at around noon, the 30th. So what I'll do is I'll add a, posi add a position report to Loch Ness at that point. And uh, as this is the start of a new passage, I'll change its type to the start of a passage. So I double clicked on that report and I'm now changing its type. And uh, now, as I continue forward in the forecast, I can get a sense of where I'll be and what's happening at that time. So it looks like the wind uh, here, back up a few hours. Yeah, the apparent wind is around 42 degrees from my port, uh, which is pretty good. I'm kind of close to the wind, but that's saleable. Uh, here's 49. So yeah, it looks like the uh, wind is pretty good uh, for this departure. Let's back up a little more, get a sense of what's going on. Okay, so it looks like I may be close to a low. So if I was to maintain that speed, uh, but yeah, that's fine. There's wind on my, uh, what's that, starboard side. Uh, not too strong. Uh, 20 knots on my starboard. Uh, that's quite doable. Although I, I'm pretty close to this low, and the low may develop differently than what I'm seeing. So it looks like the uh, the southern winds are 40 knots, and the winds where I'm showing here is 28. And this is now, what's that, about seven days forward in the forecast, so there's a lot of uncertainty about what we we'd actually see here. Uh, so what we're seeing now is that there's some kind of a low forming, uh, which I'll be approaching. So yeah, I, I might want to rethink that departure. So let's wait and uh, have a look what happens if we uh, download some more weather. And uh, now I'm kind of just looking at the weather again, ignoring the vessel a little bit. So it looks like that low moved over. So here's the previous file. There I am close to that weather. Here's the next download of that file. So that low changed quite a lot. And uh, that shows you the uncertainty in the weather, you know, looking that far forward. Uh, if you wait a day and download the weather again, you get quite a different result. Okay. So it looks like that's 
a little more promising. There's some light wind here, so I wouldn't be sailing at the speed I'm expecting to sail, that's for sure. So let's download some more weather. Have a look again. Yeah, that looks... So again, I wouldn't be sailing this line. I'm just getting a sense of what weather would be in the area I'm hoping to be in. It's light up here. There's a whole band of light wind. So let's go forward a little bit more. Okay. And do that again. Oh, what was that? Okay, so the weather download on November 1st. Uh, there's some something going on here. So if I was able to sustain five knots, there's a circular low in the vicinity of where I would be. Uh, the winds here aren't all that strong, but that's starting to be a concern. Generally, I, I don't want to leave the tropics and head south if I see a circular low like that below south of me. So at that point, I would decide to uh, delay again. Okay, so what I'll do is, uh, so I don't, at the moment, the, the uh, Loch Ness is leaving on, uh, is marked to be leaving on, uh, I think it's the 30th of, of uh, October. So that's no longer a possibility. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll back that up. I'll I'll see what happens if I have Loch Ness leaving uh, sometime around the middle of no of uh, of Monday. So I'll come in. If I double click on that departure, I can say set a new departure time from the timeline. And by doing that, the vessel's backed up to there, and now it's leaving at that that forecast time. Okay. So oh, okay. There's that low again. So I used to be further along, now I'm approaching that low uh, as it's forming. I don't like that. So let's wait a couple more days and download some more weather. Okay, here's another one. Uh, so I'm, this is a download just a few days, a few hours later. Here's the next forecast run. And there's the low in this forecast. There's the previous. So that low actually did, it got worse. So this is the same forecast time. We're looking at two different weather downloads. Uh, here's the original download, and here's the download uh, six hours later. So yeah, I, didn't, I don't like that. So again, we decide to d delay our departure. Uh, let's back up a little more. So what ended up happening <laughs> was I was getting I was getting ready to leave. Uh, I was liking how it was looking. Uh, that low appeared. Uh, I was at anchor at that time, and I was just getting ready to leave anchor and head to town to uh, buy all my food for the journey. I saw that low appear, and I decided, no, I don't want to do that. I'm going to wait a little bit longer. So, around here. So I think now what happened was that the wind turned light, uh, leaving Savu Savu uh, for the first part of the journey. So here I would be leaving on passage in such light winds that I can't really sail. And I prefer not to motor for the first while. So I waited a little bit longer, and I believe I end up traveling on the uh, was it November 8th, I think? So by the 7th, that forecast is showing a uh, better wind in the area. So let's see what happens if I depart on right here. So again, I'll double click on that report, set the departure time from the timeline. And now it's showing uh, the apparent wind. Uh, at the vessel is 16 knots 
both at 29 degrees on the port side. So I wouldn't be able to sail this angle. Uh, so I'd be falling off. So to get to a point where I can sail that, I ended up needing to be, oh, where are we now? So at that point, the apparent wind is at 40 degrees. And if I go too far with that, then I'm gonna interfere with this island down here. So that's not so good. So let's wait a little bit longer. And I think on the eighth, it's looking pretty good. So let's uh, back this up. Come forward a few more hours. And again, I'll reset the departure time to uh, this forecast time. And now I'll go forward. And uh, in this area before, the apparent wind was at 30, was at 28 degrees, now it's at 48. So the wind has shifted, that's nice. So leaving Sabu Sabu, the, uh, what, six hours later, the wind's at 50 degrees apparent, at a nice speed. And a little bit later, it's at 46 degrees. And yeah, it's, in like, it's like 40, so it's in, it's forward of the beam the whole time. Uh, the winds are all reasonable magnitude, uh, so yeah, I, I can actually sail out of Sabu Sabu, there'd be no motoring, that's nice. Now it looks like the wind turns a bit light, so now the wind at the vessel is 8 knots, uh, but it's forward of the beam, so I'll be sailing into the wind, uh, so I can do that. It wouldn't be very fast, but that's sailable. Continuing on, the wind's pretty light again. So I'm probably going to be changing direction. Uh, and it's actually, yeah, the apparent wind here is 22 degrees. So I'm going too far upwind. So at this point, I would need to do something like uh, be heading off at a better angle. So now the angle is, where'd that go? 56 degrees. Okay, 81. Okay, that looks fine. Looking good. Now I'm going downwind now. Yeah, so I mean, now we're so far he ahead in the forecast that what we're seeing, we can no longer rely on uh, these details uh, being true. So I'll zoom out. Um, so the question I'm looking at now is, is there anything concerning in this area? Like, do I want to end up here not really knowing what the weather is going to be? Uh, and just kind of deal with whatever happens. So there's a low off to my west approaching. Uh, but that's pretty typical. I mean, lows uh, tend to be generated off of Australia every 7 to 10 days. And uh, I can't really leave Fiji. Uh, in good con like be guaranteed good, good conditions along the entire length. You kind of need to leave and uh, you know do the best you can for the first five or six days. And then beyond that, you're kind of relying on the season you're leaving as being you know indication of the not being a super strong storm along the way. There's always, you know, there's always some risk involved. But uh, yeah, it looks like that that's pretty good. You know, for the first uh, while looks like the uh, it's a pretty good sail so yeah at this point I uh, up anchor head back to town go shopping and uh, plan to leave so what I'll do now is I'll uh, update the <laughs> update the report to the actual departure time and I'll add the first few positions for uh, for what actually happened All right, here I am uh, leaving Sabu Sabu. Uh, I left uh, <laughs> there and here I am continuing. So I was able, was able to sail out of Sabu Sabu, uh, exited the Fijian Islands and things slowed down pretty quickly. So here I am going at 3.4 knots, uh, but still sailing. Let's get a Okay, so here's the file. So now the file sizes have gone from you know, several hundred, several hundred kilobytes, uh, down to 13 kilobytes. So these are the files I was downloading through my single side band and sail mail. 
and uh, on my next passage I hope to have a, a better solution for this using my own app. Stay tuned. Okay, so here we are. So now I'm downloading weather every day and generally planning my route. So now I'm forecasting where I'll be. So again, I'm looking at the apparent winds, trying to choose a good sailing angle. And um, generally at this point, trying to shoot for this point uh, north of New Zealand at around 30 degrees south. And the idea is that if there is some kind of strong weather uh, south, it's better to take that uh, further north than further south. The further south you go, the generally the uh, weather becomes more extreme. Uh, so if it was a big low that formed as I was approaching this area, this would be a nice area to kind of hold back to reduce sail, go slow, uh, let the weather south of you develop a little bit, let it pass through, and then speed things up again. So I'm going to head towards this point pretty much. So this point uh, can be ignored. I'll move that point around uh, as I need to plan this trip. Okay, so I'm looking at the parent wind, 70 to 2 degrees. So I can go a bit further. Let's get rid of this one and see what happens. Yeah, okay, that apparent wind looks pretty good. So, yeah, generally this is all sailable. Uh, I, I'm at a good angle to the wind. The wind is strong enough to be sailing. Uh, so I'm not going to worry too much about the, the exact positions. Uh, I'm looking at this saying, yeah, I can, I can figure this out. I'll go back up on deck, uh, look at the wind, and, uh, and do whatever I need to do to sail through here. I don't see anything too concerning. Uh, let's go forward a little bit. Okay, yeah, it's a nice wind arriving here. And that all looks nice to be on my beam a little bit behind. So that's very nice sailing that. So it looks like things are going pretty well. There's going to be a big shift in wind happening down here. Uh, but at the moment, it looks strong enough to be uh, sailing the whole way. And I'll be arriving at my uh, third degree of south decision point. Oh, okay, just some headwinds here. So it goes from uh, being behind me to uh, to headwinds. So that's where I need to download more weather and approach this area and make a decision. So again, I'll uh, advance this to uh, a few more days. Okay, so here we are. We've continued on. I've added more uh, reports of my actual vessel travel. Uh, and now we need to plan a little bit more. So, so far, we've been having, uh, in this area, the wind's been behind us. And as we progress now, there's a big shift coming right around here. So it's going to be going from behind us uh, to in front of us. So at this point, the wind is uh, the <laughs> 12 degrees off my starboard bow. Uh, which clearly is uh, not an angle I can sail at. So again, what I'll do is I'll insert a point in the route and uh, move that around to uh, pick a better angle. So I'll move that up here. Uh, now the wind is at, uh, kind of on my beam pretty much, so that's decent. Uh, 40 degrees, I can sail that. 47, so now the wind is Oh yeah, became more. Okay, so this turn is too soon. Or let's. What? Oh yeah, so the wind. Oh, that's nice. Yep. So here it is the wind. Oh, let's move this over. So I want to go forward more in this at this angle. And then the wind here is shifting uh, from southeast to northeast. So as that shift happens, I want to head towards Apua, and the wind's going to be behind me, uh, but it's 17 knots in strength. So yeah, that's strong enough. I can sail down the wind in those conditions. That'll be nice. Uh, right to Apua. So let's back up again, find out where that shift is happening. Yeah, I mean, at, at this point, I'm still a couple of days away from here. So I, can, I know that I can continue with this plan. There's no need to... Uh, delay my departure, sorry, delay my entrance into the uh, area south of 30 degrees. There's nothing serious happening here. So yeah, at this point I, can, I decide that, yeah, there's a plan forward. Uh, let's keep on going. 
So yeah, I'll pause again and uh, add a few more reports. Okay, here we are. So generally, we've been sailing along the plan we had earlier. Uh, now we're a bit further south, and we're in the area where this shift in the wind is going to happen. So this is that last blue point is the actual uh, vessel position in that at that time. So let's move the second, the last point into Apu, into the Bay of Islands. And this one will kind of head towards there. So at this point, the apparent wind, if I'm going five knots, will be 15 knots, uh, 55 degrees off my starboard bow. So I can sail that, that's fine. And it goes from that, there'll be a transition. And the, the timing of that, uh, will be dependent on the conditions. So the forecast is showing it's happening in this, you know, this general time. So at, at, the, at the point the vessel's at now, I'm sailing at an apparent wind angle of 44 degrees, uh, with the apparent wind as being 14 knots. Uh, that's beautiful. And then things right in here turns light. So I could actually head further southeast at this point. There's no need to turn right there. Uh, according to this forecast and so rather than being at this point maybe I continue further over here and then as this develops so now at that, I guess at that point I'd be heading too close to the winds I need to go more south and uh, now there's some kind of front coming in with, with stronger winds behind it so now the winds over here are 20 knots and uh, yeah so at this point be something happening in here so I'll, I'll decide that based on the actual conditions uh, but the forecast is showing I have a couple options I can either head I can either turn at this point uh, or go a bit further southeast and that'll be that may be dependent on how fast this front arrives uh, I may want to wait for the front and then, and then change direction with the stronger winds uh, but that's a choice I can make at the time now let's back up a little bit again, go forward. Okay, there's nothing, okay, now I, I kind of want to arrive before this all happens. So there's some stronger winds. Uh, that's going from north east wind. Uh, pretty soon after that, I'm getting northwest. And then a little south away. So I, I kind of want to arrive before then, so I don't want to be hanging around too much. It's kind of time to uh, make this last turn and then head into Apua. Uh, even this wind isn't strong, but yeah, it'd be nice to arrive before that happened. It's always nice to arrive without breaking anything on your boat. So again, I'll uh, add a few more positions in. Okay, here I am. I've added, added in a few last uh, position, position reports. And uh, now, this last little bit, uh, yeah, I, uh, I don't add <laughs> these reports for every single change in direction. Uh, I add them to luck grib kind of as I, well, as I feel like it, to as I want to evaluate the weather. I'll let it know where I am currently, and then from there I can plan forward. So the historic tracks uh, sometimes lack points. Close enough. So yeah, I made a turn. I, uh, I'm i kind of in the front, or just in front of it. I believe it took overtook me. Uh, the wind at this point, actually a bit less than the, in the other forecast. Uh, and basically, yeah, it ended up with the uh, the final trip into Apua being a bit of a slate ride. Uh, beautiful conditions, you know, 20 knots of wind or so be behind me, leaving my apparent wind at about, you know, in the mid-teens. Uh, it's wonderful. So yeah, there's a <laughs> there's one example of how to plan a passage. Uh, I got a little, a little lucky with the weather. Uh, but yeah, you, you, you don't want to plan the entire passage before you leave. You want to get a sense of uh, what's happening, the, the big picture, and then as the as you progress, uh, worry about the uh, the shorter term. And uh, I'm sure there's different ways of using the app. Uh, what I've done is I've provided you with a bunch of tools which you can use, you know, kind of however you want. 
and I'm sure different sailors have different techniques for uh, for doing this. That's kind of how I was working. Okay, let's just uh, finish up this passage. I'll add the last uh, report uh, for my arrival time, and then we'll continue. Okay, I'll zoom in here to uh, to Apua, and uh, yeah, when you arrive, you want to just mark uh, when you when you arrived and I'll show you how that's done uh, simply a little bit later uh, but when you've done that you want to double click on that report and just change its type to be uh, the end of passage report and at this point you can uh, move the cursor close to your passage and uh, it shows you uh, on the right hand side over in this area uh, that this passage was 1300 miles and it took me uh, 10 days 19 hours it's always kind of fun to uh, to have a look at those stats when you finish a finish a passage. So I think what I'll do is I'll I'll uh, try and I'll show you some of the uh, tools, uh, some more tools which you can use uh, on a passage, and just to round out the functionality a little bit, and then call it quits. This video is getting kind of long. So the next thing I want to show is how to enter your position uh, while you're underway. Uh, on the Mac, there is no support for GPS at the moment. Uh, that may be added in the future, but uh, for now, uh, nope, you're out of luck. So you, you need to type in uh, your location, and that's done pretty simply. So uh, for this test, I've uh, created a new vessel called Lat Long Test. And I've put one position report in it, uh, and that's the location of this vessel uh, yesterday. So what I want to do is update this vessel location uh, for right now. So the scenario is that I'm sailing along, and I want to update the position. Uh, so I've put this vessel uh, around 180 degrees uh, east-west. It's on the east side. Sorry, the west side. <laughs> and it's a little bit south of the equator. So let's do that. There's a point editor up in the toolbar. So let's open that up. Uh, we'll tear it off. Uh, we'll try it out a little bit. So there are two vessels. There's Loch Ness and Lat Long Test. And to enter the position, you have to specify three pieces of information, uh, which vessel you want to use, the time of the report and the location of the report. So you can type in the name of the vessel, uh, just enough of the name to make it unique. So if I type in L, that's not enough because both Loch Ness and that long test start with an L. Uh, but typing in Loch will specify Loch Ness and typing in Lat will specify you want this report to go with Lat long test. And that's what I want. And normally when you're entering reports, uh, pos position reports, you are doing it for right now. So you'll, you'll glance at a GPS on board and then walk over to Luck Grib and type it in. So you can t type in the date by saying now. And you see the date now is, ne is now reflected in this area. Uh, you can also type in the date with a, well, <laughs> as much as you want. So there's, this field's pretty flexible. Uh, you can say uh, 2 p.m. Uh, you can say midnight. Uh, you can say all kinds of stuff. October 23rd, 2015 at 4 p.m. Uh, but for now, we'll type in, wait, I want to record the location right now. So there's that. And this location at the moment is uh, I think it's around, where are we here? Uh, yeah, it's, about one, it's almost two degrees south, 177 west. So I'll have the, I'll have the vessel heading uh, a little bit west. So I'll leave it at two degrees south and I'll go to 178 degrees. So I just type two 178 and uh, yep, there it is. So there's a little bit, there's a little bit going on here. So this is actually, it maintained the south. So uh, the, the first number you enter is lat, second number you enter is longitude. And I type in two, 
uh, and the system was able to know that you wanted two south. So that's cool. So I'll, I'll undo that and say I wanted to have this one uh, go north. I'm, I'm traveling north of the equator now. So I want to maintain, uh, I'll head up to two degrees north and I want it to be 177 west still. Uh, now if I just type that in, it's going to assume you want two south. So you want to give it an N, type in north. And uh, just with that, 2177 north, you specified this location. And now if you were to advance the time a little bit, I'll say the next day and type in 33. Three. Uh, it knows what quadrant of the, uh, of the grid you're in. So let's undo those, undo, undo. Type in now again. And uh, now we want to travel across the date line uh, over here somewhere. So we'll stay two south. And we'll go over to uh, 178 uh, uh, east. Uh, there's that. And once you cross the date line, uh, you can create n new reports simply by giving the numbers again. So say I want to go south a little bit and further west, 175. There we go. Okay, undo, undo. So normally you'll type in more than just the longitude. Uh, you want uh, more accuracy than that. So say I want to go from this current location uh, at now, and I want to head a little bit west and a little bit north. So I'll go uh, over to uh, one degree south, uh, 30 minutes, and I'll head over to uh, 178, uh, 24 minutes. And there's that. And you're only with that, you're only with that with four numbers, you can get down to one mile of accuracy, which is really good enough for weather work. Uh, with the inaccuracy built into the, the forecasts, uh, if you're located within one nautical mile, that's, that's good enough. So if you give this field two numbers, you're specifying lat long. If you give it four numbers, you're specifying latitude degrees, latitude minutes, followed by longitude degrees, longitude minutes. And if you were to give it six numbers, you're specifying latitude degrees, latitude minutes, latitude seconds, followed by longitude degrees, minutes, seconds. And there's really no need for that. Uh, so that's pretty much it. So if you have a logbook and you want to uh, go back and enter your positions for all the old entries, uh, which is what I did, uh, just to get a sense of how far I've, I've sailed, uh, you can do that fairly easily. It's a little tedious, but not too bad. So one trick will be, well, my logbook is not in UTC, it's in uh, local time zones. So you want to make sure that the time zone you're entering reports for matches your system time. So I changed my system time to uh, Fiji time and Hawaii time and so on as my logbook uh, dictated. And then basically you, if I tried to record positions uh, every noon. So if I started a passage, uh, say I started sailing somewhere uh, July 7th, uh, 2011, uh, at noon. So there's the time uh, I just told it. And I can look at my logbook, enter a location, whatever, one, two, three, four. Uh, <laughs> And now, if you advance your logbook to the next day and you have a noon report again, you can just simply type in next, which is the next day. So now it's July, July 8th, 2011 at noon, and give it a new position, and then again, go to the, ne the logbook entry for the next day. And uh, that makes it a little bit easier. Next, next, next. Uh, if you don't have, uh, if you haven't recorded your position in your logbook at noon every day, then you'll have to uh, type in uh, more information. Uh, but it's pretty doable. Depends how curious you are about how far you've sailed. So the last thing I'll do is uh, show you that uh, you can actually, uh, if you uh, create uh, a long track for your vessel and you want to share it with people, you, you can do that. You can, s you can export your vessel track as a GPX, as an external file and then copy that file to somebody else, either through email or however you do that. 
and have them import that file into their version of Lectrib on the Mac and they can see your track. Uh, so that's what I want to do. So I, I, I took my LuckNest track and uh, chopped it up into small bits so I could show you the Fiji part of it. So what I'll do is I'll delete these two vessels and I'll import the track I saved. Yeah, there it is. And the way you save that is you go into the, the root editor and you look at the lo locations for your vessel. And in here I have all the, all the reports for positions. Uh, and the green and red rows indicate starts and ends of passages. But there's an export GPX button down here. And you tell it where you want to put it and it'll save that file for you. And I think with that, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I, I think, uh, I'm hoping that there'll be more tools in this area uh, coming in the future. Uh, at the moment, it's a fairly manual process to do passage planning, uh, which is nice in a way that there's nothing magic going on. You, you can reason with these tools about how to move through weather. And with a little practice, uh, I think you'll get the hang of it. And in the future, it'd be nice to have uh, a little more help. So yeah, stay tuned. We'll see what happens with that. So yeah, that's luck. Drib on the Mac. Uh, let me know what you think. Thanks.